name's Rachel and today I'm complaining about books again. Who's shocked? Just kidding. I have some good things to say. Hi, my name's Rachel and today we're talking about young adult thrillers. While romanticy may be seemingly taking over the young adult scene and the new adult scene and the adult scene, the literary landscape has evolved over the years, thankfully, and authors are catering to a diverse range of readers. And one genre that has gained significant popularity is the thriller genre. Thrillers are known for their suspenseful narratives, unexpected plot twists, storylines that keep you on the edge of your seat. The young adult thriller sect in particular, with super popular books such as A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and all of Tiffany D. Jackson's books, is now a dynamic and very influential category of books because it offers a very unique blend, in my opinion, of suspense, protagonists, and exploration of issues that are relevant to today. It could be one of my favorite genres and one of my favorite age groups. Particularly, I like YA thrillers because I feel a little bored with like the Lisa Jewel type thrillers we have going on lately and I think that there is just more variety going on, more variety being written by authors who write for young adult audiences. And variety is deeply needed in thrillers because you especially want in a thriller something that is suspenseful, something that will keep you guessing and keeps you on your toes. However, it is very easy to write a thriller that is a miss. So what makes a hit? Hard to articulate. I struggle with how to review thriller books in general and suggest specific changes in them, but I recently listened to Benjamin Percy talk about suspense, not suspense the like genre, but suspense the storytelling element. Suspense as a writing tool. Many of you know I've been using Skillshare classes to help me learn about storytelling, to help me channel that into writing better reviews. I took one class by Benjamin Percy who has written for DC Comics and also writes about writing. He has a great class called Writing Suspense, How to Write Stories That Thrill in Any Genre, and this really helped me in articulating what goes wrong and what goes right in thrillers. In his class he he breaks down the essentials of writing a story that utilizes suspense not just overall but in scene by scene. So talking about not just utilizing like one overall goal but making small incremental goals in your writing process, in your plot, scene by scene, and then also at the story at large level. Also using triangulation, so triangulating between character A and character B, using things like midpoint reversals. All of this helps you to develop a plot that keeps your reader turning the pages, not wanting to put the book down. He also discusses is the turnstile of mysteries or he calls it dance of the flaming chainsaws. So controlling what your reader knows for a thrilling effect and I recently read a book that I want to talk about today which is this book that I feel did that really well. He calls this controlling like what your reader knows temporary blindness. This is one really smart and effective technique in building suspense along with building three-dimensional characters with clear motivations and entwining the narrative plot and the emotional plot of your work. I've used classes not just from Benjamin Percy, I've also used classes from Saba Tahir and Daniel Jose older and I've used their writing advice to help me write better reviews. But whether you are a writer or a reviewer, I think you can learn a lot from Skillshare classes on storytelling. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives. They have a wide range of topics, everything from marketing, writing, music, illustration, photography, graphic design, productivity, and there's a ton of writing advice on there. There are so many classes I recommend not just for writers but anyone learning how to write reviews or just trying to understand storytelling more and learning how to analyze a story. Skillshare is an on-demand platform and it has stackable lessons so members can learn at their own pace no matter what your skill level is. You can focus your creative journey with Skillshare Learning Paths, a set of curated classes that build on one another, reinforcing your lessons. They are available in a range of experience levels from beginner to advanced. One learning path that I have been utilizing is developing memorable fictional characters which includes Daniel Jose Older's class and Saba's class which both of I have taken and I loved as well as a class by Lindsay Summers that I am using to write an upcoming review. So whether you want to learn the basics of storytelling or the basics of watercolor painting or you want to learn how to start your own creative business, Skillshare has classes to take you from beginner to pro alongside a supportive community that you can chat about your projects with. The first 500 people to use my link down below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Whatever your craft is that you are looking to hone, whether it's marketing, writing, reviewing, you can get started today by clicking that link down below to get your one month free trial of Skillshare. And thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. This is my palette cleanser genre, okay? So I'm gonna preface this by saying that I am not using this to shit on young adult books. I do like many YA thrillers, as I said. I'm going to tell you about some of them. Some of them I have read, and I've read a lot of this genre. This is gonna get a little rambly, I'm sorry. The problem that I have 
problem <laughs> with a lot of adult thrillers is for some reason a lot of adult thrillers for some reason a lot of them do like a lot of mental health is the twist mental illness is the twist which I don't like and why are there so many miscarriages in them I got this book all the dangerous things and it had miscarriage in it so and somebody thank god warned me about it so I I gave it to my sister <laughs> because she does not have miscarriage drama but like the family upstairs by Lisa Jewell completely unwarned miscarriage traumatic miscarriage in this had a terrible panic attack so I get really nervous because I feel like a lot of them are doing the same kinds of things where it's like it's a mentally ill person which do we really need to do we really need to do that or it's there's miscarriage trauma so I'm like the the YA space is doing more variety and doing stuff that I don't feel like is very triggering so if you have adult thrillers to leave down below I'd love to hear them I just for my own safety have not been reading them very often because I keep getting burned by them young adult books are just as good as adult books middle grade books are just as good as young adult books and adult books I read a variety um, I'm gonna be doing a video on my, some of my favorite middle grade books soon because I just read another one shout out Lindsay Puckett and I really want to talk about how I review middle grade from an adult's perspective and how you know I really try to be fair to that so all that to say I am trying to be fair when I review young adult books in general I am I feel like I am very fair some people don't think so <laughs> that's your prerogative that's fine but I am trying to be very fair and this is a genre that I have a lot of love for because as I said it is my palette cleanser genre whenever I've read back to back to back of a lot of I mean I read like a ton of shit I, I don't really the only thing I don't read is westerns and so I read a ton of stuff and sometimes I just feel the need to like reset so I just like read a quick thriller and quick is of course nine hours but you know it feels quicker because you're not like learning a whole magic system you, you kind of like know what you're getting when you're going in and you're just there for the <gasps> you know what I mean this is my palette cleanser genre, uh, which I am so thankful that it exists because it's the best palette cleanser. You're shocked, you're surprised, you move on with your life, you hope you take a piece of that book with you, right? There is a lot of mediocrity, and some of them just frankly piss me off in the way they write their twists, but some of them are so, so good. <laughs> Again, shout out Tiffany D. Jackson. So I'm gonna give you a rundown of this genre in this particular age range. I'd have to do a different video on adult thrillers, and then I'll make you a list of ones I hated and ones I loved. What worked and what what does not work. Today I'm talking about psychological thrillers in particular with no fantastical or paranormal elements. Some of these have horror elements but no paranormal. So I will do a separate review on paranormal books. I did do a review of one recently that I really liked, Your Blood My Bones. I just did a review of that so you can find that on my channel. So no paranormal stuff in any of these books. Got it? Cool. Okay so elements of the thriller genre written for a young adult audience. They're typically going to have protagonists that are featured that are relatable to the audience, right? These characters are typically teenagers because we're writing for teenagers. So what you're going to see is a lot of the struggles, the fears, the aspirations of young adults so that the book will resonate with young adults it's written for. Because you really want to draw kids into the narrative. I don't know if you know this, but it's actually kind of hard to get kids to read. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a second. Another thing that is great and part of the reason that this is my palette cleanser genre is these are fast paced. They're super fast unless they're written back. You're kind of like just going at a hundred miles an hour in a in a thriller. You really have to be smart about crafting a narrative that captures the attention of the reader from the very beginning and holds on to it while creating an intricate plot with unexpected twists so that we keep the audience engaged the entire time. You don't want them to take their eyes off of what you're doing. Another thing that you'll often find in this particular age range in particular is like exploring issues that are relevant to today. So young adult thrillers will delve into conversations around things that teens are experiencing today and, and outside of just the teenage age range. So we're going to be talking about social justice, mental health, yes, hopefully not in a derogatory way sexism, identity, things like that. Obviously a huge component of these are also the tension, the suspense. Like I talked about before, Benjamin Percy has a whole class on it. You really have to smartly use suspense in order to write a good thriller. And you're building this like upwards in a very specific way that does not exist when you're writing like a fantasy book. You kind of want your audience to doubt themselves and doubt your characters and doubt the writing. You, you kind of want to make them second guess at 
every which way. And also when you, and Benjamin Percy talks about this, when you write suspense like that, you're also trying to mesh it together with the emotional beats to really like make the greatest impact with your narrative. And another element that you'll find is like moral grayness, uh, moral ambiguity. So you'll find a lot of like trying to have a conversation with the intended audience about exploring right and wrong and the, the gray area there. So it's a great way to encourage critical thinking in the intended audience. And that's important. In fact, there are a lot of like really important reasons why this genre exists and should exist. And we should encourage teens to read it if they like it. I mean, anybody can read it, but like who it's written for is still important because not only is, you know, seeing yourself reflected in the text important just so that, you know, you can feel seen. It also further encourages a love of reading. And again, I don't know if you know this, but it's actually really hard to get kids to read if they're not interested. My kid was really having trouble and I tried and tried to get him to read like chapter books, but the only thing I can get him to read is graphic novels. Shout out Dogman. Dogman is saving my life right now. When my kid told me he liked Dogman, you will not believe how fast I I took him to the bookstore. It's also really important for teens to have a safe place to navigate these complex themes and foster conversation and help them to make decisions about how they want to form their perspectives on social issues and their own identity. Also, obviously, it just promotes literacy. Imagine how many more kids, more teens would be willing to pick up books if they knew that the thriller genre exists. I mean, the page turning quality of this genre genre is going to get more reading to happen. And the literacy rate in the United States is, is low and, and I think that encouraging this like broad diverse range of genre and encouraging teens to pick these things up can really help. And then obviously not just seeing yourself reflected in the story, it is, is uh, seeing yourself reflected in the story, I, I also want to uh, like talk about how empowering that is because we're talking about things that relate to them but packaged in a way that they're actually interested in picking up and it's not just like a sermon or a nonfiction book or a textbook, which is really difficult to get young adult audiences interested in. So all this to say, this genre, this age group in this genre plays a crucial role in our literary landscape of today. I'm so glad it exists and I love reading and reviewing it. Trying to say like who I think it's for and what the importance of it is, I think is a really helpful way to review it. But again, anyone can read anything they want in any age range. Apparently this person who got upset with me for reading YA books doesn't think so, but I still think so. But when we review, it is important to take into account the age range of the intended audience and whether or not the text is doing right by that audience, like whether they were actually thought of, whether they're like really actually represented in, in the right way. One author who I think excels at writing YA um, non-paranormal thrillers obviously is Tiffany D. Jackson, who I've mentioned before, but I'm not going to talk about Tiffany D. Jackson's books in this video. I want to do a separate video where I I talk about them because I want to read, I'm going to try to read, I can't read the one where a baby died, uh, it's too triggering for me, but I want to read the rest of them. I have not read The Way to Blood yet, but I have read Monday's Not Coming, Grown, and White Smoke. All of them are four and a half to five stars, excellent books, and I would like to talk about them, but in a different book after I read The Way to Blood. So not doing any Tiffany D. Jackson books today. We're going to talk about a rather long list, honestly, of books that I have read. Anyway, let me tell you about what I didn't like, and then I'll, I'll tell you about what I did like. So Jane Anon Anonymous by Lori Faria Stolars. I gave this a two. I'll read you the synopsis. Jane was just your typical 17 year old getting ready to start her senior year. She had a part-time job she enjoyed, an awesome best friend, overbearing but loving parents, and a crush on a boy who was taking her to see his favorite band. She never would have imagined that in her town where nothing ever happens, a series of small coincidences would lead to a devastating turn of events that would forever change her life. Now it's been three months since Jane escaped captivity and returned home, but three months of being that girl who was kidnapped, the girl who was held by a quote monster. But what if everything you thought you knew, everything you thought you experienced turned out to be a lie? Okay, so this is told, this switches um, in timeline and I think that that did a re that can be really helpful in storytelling. That can be really suspenseful. Here we just picked the wrong parts to flash back and forward to. I also saw the twist coming but the weird thing is I think maybe you were supposed 
supposed to and I don't understand that choice here because the synopsis sort of said it. What if everything you thought you experienced turned out to be a lie? And so I went in knowing that that was a, was a thing and that sort of ruined it for me because I while the things were happening I was like so this is a lie then and it ruined it for me. This had some good ideas. It almost it almost did enough to satisfy that palette cleansing thing I crave about thrillers but well, I don't know. I appreciate it. So the scenes with her mom where she's talking about her trauma and she's like I feel like what happened to me my traumatic experience I'm being spoken over. I thought that that was a really good point but I don't understand why they didn't have her why we didn't have scenes with her in therapy. I think that that would have been a more helpful POV. If this had been more about the after and less about the before I think it would have worked better. We're just doing too much. So don't spoil your own synopsis or don't spoil your twist in your synopsis. Don't do that because you ruin the book. A brand new one that I read recently and I really enjoyed was That's Not My Name by Megan Lally. Oh wow. Shout out to Alice, one of my patrons, Alice, who was like, you should read this. And Alice was right. I did need to read this. I loved it. Let me give you the synopsis. Shivering and bruised, a teen wakes up on the side of a dirt road with no memory of how she got there or who she is. A passing officer takes her to the police station and not long after, a frantic man arrives. He's been searching for her for hours. He has her school ID, her birth certificate, and even family photos. He is her father. Her name is Mary, or so he says. When Lola slammed the car door and stormed off into the night, Drew thought they just needed some more time to cool off. Off, except Lola disappeared and the sheriff, his friend, and the whole town are convinced Drew murdered his girlfriend. Forget proving his innocence, he needs to find her before it's too late. The longer Lola is missing, the fewer leads there are to follow and the more danger they are both in. So I should have seen the twist in this coming, but I didn't. So that was a point in the book's favor already. This also did an impeccable job of the building of suspense. Just immaculate. Exactly how I want it in a thriller. Exactly how I want it. But in general, this was so much more than I was anticipating. The character work here was so good. The way that this author took the time to write about grief in a way that I felt was so sensitive. I just can't thank her enough for doing that because a lot of a lot of books make very much like spectacle out of like murder thrillers and I felt like this was very intentional and compassionate in the way that it talked about grief and I just I cried at the end and I, I don't I hardly ever cry at the end of thrillers and that was that that was really well done. I'm gonna give you no spoilers on on hardly any of these because I don't want you to know anything. I'm trying to help build the suspense but I'll give you a little bit of like theme and character work. So in here I think the building of character was so well done in Drew. He it really reflects what I think a teenage boy would go through in this situation and I thought that that was so important. I also think that the way this author took the time to shit on the idea of clean books. I cannot thank you enough. <laughs> because I'm tired. I, I sit down and I try to write a script about how tired I am of using that term clean to describe books and I'm just exhausted by it. So I appreciate her taking a dig at that. Again, I didn't see the twist in this coming. I thought I knew what was happening and until I didn't. And I was very surprised and very pleasantly surprised. But wow, the ending, how incredibly impactful and compassionate. I just, I can't thank this author enough. I really had such a fantastic time reading this. I could not put it down. Shout out to the audiobook narrators because they did such a great job. This is on Everend and I can't recommend it enough. If YA thrillers are your palate cleanser genre, look no further than this. It's new. It just came out this year and I, I can't recommend it enough. Thrillers can sometimes be very surface level, not really talking about it, like important intricacies of like what it means to go through these like really traumatic events. And this I think did that in a way that was not like preachy, overdone. I thought that it was just right. I'm like Goldilocks over here. This one is just right. Another one I gave five stars to. I, I want to talk about another one that I liked. Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Iyamide, I think is how you say her name. This was so good. This is an example of one where you know what's going on, you just don't really know who's involved, and it's more about what's happening to the characters and them persevering than it is about the twists. In my opinion, I think other people probably had a different reading experience though. I'll give you the synopsis. Welcome to Nivea's private private academy where money paves the hallways and the students are never less than perfect until now because anonymous texter Aces is bringing two students dark secrets to light. Talented musician Devin buries himself in rehearsals but he can't escape the spotlight when his 
private photos go public. Head girl Chiamaka isn't afraid to get what she wants, but soon everyone will know the prices she has paid for her power. Someone is out to get them both, someone who holds all the aces, and they're planning much more than a high school game. So this is so queer. <laughs> it's everybody, both main characters are queer, and it's about a dangerous private academy where these kids are, despite them just trying their best, trying their best to fit in, trying their best to, you know, be the best. They are, people are coming for them. And I was not expecting this to end in a way that was so incredibly hopeful. And I can tell who this was written for. And I think the author did so right by them. And I think that this was just, I mean, it, it was very fast paced. You're not really sure who's all involved. It's sort of devastating when you find out. It's just so good. It's so, so good. And I really appreciated that our, our main characters were not like these like perfect people. People. You know, there are people who've made mistakes and like what if you, more so than your peers, had these mistakes like highlighted for everybody to see. So this is very good. It's very good writing. It's very intentional writing. It's very smart writing. I loved this. One that I did not love. One that actually, oh, this book pissed me off so bad. Um, okay. I hesitate to even say this. All right. It's All Your Twisted Secrets by Diana Urban. I like Diana Urban. We follow each other. Diana, if you're somehow here, please don't watch this. I'm begging you. This book made me so mad. This book made me so mad. <laughs> Um, I'm way more excited for Diana's upcoming book where like two teens who they you know are like boyfriend girlfriend she goes to a party and then she gets lost in the Paris catacombs and he's like racing against the clock to find her. I think I'm gonna like that one. I wish I liked this one. The particular ultimate twist at the end of this book sort of felt like a slap in the face to me. This is my palette cleanser genre as I said but I'm not reading something just to get it over with. I want to read something still worth my time and this book wasted my time just because of how the the ultimate twist at the end. I was so mad. The synopsis reads, welcome to dinner and again congratulations on being selected. Now you must do the selecting. What do you, the queen bee, star athlete, valedictorian, stoner, loner, and music geek all have in common? They were all invited to a scholarship dinner only to discover it's a trap. Someone has locked them into a room with a bomb, a syringe filled with poison, and a note saying they have an hour to pick someone to kill or else everyone dies. Amber Prescott is determined to get her classmates and herself out of the room alive and it might be easier said than done. No one knows how they're all connected or who would want them dead. As they retrace the events over the past year that might have triggered the, the captor's ultimatum, it becomes clear that everyone is hiding something and with the clock ticking down, confusion turns into fear and fear morphs into panic as they race to answer the biggest question, who will they choose to die? It's Breakfast Club meets one of you has to die. Closed circle mysteries where you are, you have like an hour <laughs> are very hard to do. It's very difficult. I also accept that an unreliable narrator is very difficult to do, but, and this is a spoiler, so mute me until this timestamp. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay. The main character spends the whole book saying she doesn't know what's happening, but then in the end reveals she set this whole thing up. Now see, <laughs> then this should not have been in her POV then. It should have been third person and we don't fix on anybody. I just felt lied to and not like in a fun way but in a wasted my time kind of way. I understand that it's very difficult to do like a closed tight-knit area with a small group of people and do a murder mystery. I totally get that. I have seen enough episodes of Murder She Wrote where I have figured out who the bad guy is and started feeling like, my god, it's like I'm watching Scooby-Doo all over again. Listen, I get it. It's very hard to write those to an audience who likely reads the genre or watches the genre and knows how to give away the ending, but the answer is not to lie to the audience. That just feels cheap. So this is one that I just don't recommend. I just do not. I don't I think it's, I don't, I just don't think that we did right by our audience here. It just felt like a slap in the face. I thought the character work was good. Like it's very interesting finding out everybody's secrets, but the ending being the way that it was ruined all of it for me. Like every single thing that I had experienced was tainted because of how frustrating I found the ending to be and having been lied to rather than intentionally misled. It, it, it didn't feel like an intentional mislead or misdirection. It felt like a blatant lie. You know what I mean? I don't like that. It's very difficult to do unreliable narrator and I feel like this wasn't that. This was just lying and we should have had multi POV um, or like third person and and not fixated so much on Amber and then it it would have it would have it would have been it would have been okay. Another one. Oh, I have this, don't I? One that I actually own. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I read this years ago and I got a friend to read it and we ended up reading the the trilogy and listen, first book, five stars. Second book, 
4, 4.25, 4.5. The third book, we don't talk about it. It doesn't exist. It never happened. It's terrible. It doesn't exist. I pretend that it never happened. So if you read this series, read book one, read book two, the third book does not exist. We don't talk about it. Didn't happen, okay? This is everything that I like in a whodunit, except I did figure out the whodunit too soon, but I had a marvelous time regardless. The second book, I felt like the whodunit came out of nowhere. I had a great time up to that point, but the whodunit kind of came out of nowhere, which is why it wasn't a five. I love our main character. I love mixed media format books, which this is that. And then the next one is a podcast, which that's another thing that I love. But this one is about a girl named Pippa Fitz Amobi. I'll read you the synopsis. The case is closed. Five years ago, schoolgirl Andy Bell was murdered by Sal Singh. The police know he did it. Everyone in town knows he did it. But having grown up in the same small town that was consumed by the murder, Pippa Fitz Amobi isn't so sure. When she chooses the case as the topic for her final year project, she starts to uncover secrets that someone in the town desperately wants to stay hidden. And if the real killer is still out there, how far will they go to keep Pip from the truth? Oh, they'll go places. This is, I mean, it's just, I love mixed media format. And this really kept me on my toes because it utilized that so well. Again, I did figure out the whodunit too soon. I was like, it's probably blank. And then, and then it was. And I was like, oh, well, that's okay. Sure. I, I guess. So realistically, this is probably like a 4.5 and the second one is a four, but like in my heart, it's near and dear to my heart because I really love Pippa. I think Pippa is such a great main character. I love spending time with her until the third book. I love how smart she was and how this was really like taking a toll on her, which makes sense because you're talking about a murder that was close to you. Like it's it's in your vicinity. And I think that that was really important. Um, I will warn you, there is death of a pet in this. So you know that 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 thing does the dog die in this? This is one that the dog dies. I, I feel the need to warn you because I, I wasn't warned. Okay, the dog dies. I think this is one of the, the great. It's so fun. Um, I, I love Pippa. I love her love interest. I love Pippa's family. Oh my god, Pippa's family is a delight. I loved being in this. I wish that this series, the trilogy, had ended in a satisfactory way because this could have been one of the greats. This is great though. You should try this. There's this one part where Pippa is thinking over the evidence and she's like, something, something is not right. Something is like, it's like a worm in my brain. I can't get past it. And then when it clicks, you're like, oh my god, I forgot about that too. And I just thought that was so smart. I really like this. Next one is one that's kind of mediocre. They'll Never Catch Us by Jessica Goodman. I will give you the synopsis. A thriller about two sisters vying for the top spot on their cross-country team, the only way out of their stifling small town, but their dreams are suddenly thrown into peril when a new girl threatens to take away everything they've worked for until she disappears. Stella and Ellie Steckler are only one year apart, but their different personalities make their relationship complicated. Stella is single-minded, driven, and keeps to herself. Cross-country running is her life, and she won't let anything get in the way of being the best. Her sister Ellie is a talented runner too, but she also lets herself have fun. She has friends. She goes to parties. She has a life off the course. The sisters do have one thing in common though. The new girl, Mila Keen. Both Steckler's lives are upended when Mila comes to town. Mila was the top runner on her team back home and at first Stella and Ellie view her as a threat, but soon Ellie can't help but be drawn to her warm, charming personality. After her best friend moved away and her first boyfriend betrayed her, Ellie's been looking for a friend. In a moment of weakness, she even shares her darkest secret with Mila. For her part, Stella finds herself noticing the ways she and Mila are similar. Mila is smart and strong. She's someone Stella can finally connect with. As the two get closer, Stella becomes something she vowed she'd never be, distracted. With regionals approaching and college scouts taking notice, the pressure is on. Each girl has their future on the line and they won't let friendships get in the way, but then suddenly, Mila goes out on a training run and never returns. No one knows what happened, but all eyes are on the Steckler sisters. This is like a three for me. I liked the showcase of sisterhood in this. I thought that that was great. I really love strong sibling bonds or like kind of strained sibling bonds. Sibling bonds, yes! How tumultuous they can be, but how much love is there. I, I liked that. There's also queer rep in this. I thought that was cool. I think that this is also an important book for a teen to see what a, a teen girl to see what a shitty boyfriend looks like. This had fast pacing. It had some good conversations in it that I think teens need to be privy to. I just didn't care much about the twist, the whodunit. I don't like that when we find out what happens to Mila, instead of my jobbing on the floor, I'm just like, oh, so that's it? That's what happened? Okay. I 
guess that that sucks that that happened. I'm sorry about that. And it shouldn't be like that. I should be more emotionally invested to the point where it's like, oh, this is kind of heartbreaking. Unfortunately, this did not do that. This utilizes what a lot of thrillers do where you're flashing back to before the murder victim became a murder victim. And I never really, I, I felt more that I understood the relationship between Stella and Ellie, the sisters, rather than I understood their connection to Mila. So I think that this could have been better. It was just painfully mediocre. All right, another good one. Darling by Kay Ingram, an underrated and fast-paced book that I did not see the twist coming in, and also a Peter Pan retelling, but with no fantastical element, like no magic or anything. It's just a, it's just using like the Peter Pan type stuff to make a thriller. Very cool idea. On Wendy Darling's first night in Chicago, a boy named Peter appears at her window. He's dizzy and captivating, beautiful, so she agrees to join him for a night on the town. Wendy thinks they're heading to a party, and instead, they're soon running into the city's underground. She makes friends, a punk girl named Tinkerbell, and the last boys Peter watches over, and she makes enemies, the terrifying detective Hook, and maybe Peter himself, as his sinister secrets come to light. Come to light. Can Wendy find the courage to survive this night and make sure everyone else does too? I thought that this was so smart. I thought that this was very true to what being a teen looks and feels like. I thought that this was very smart in how it wrote grooming. I was not anticipating how this ended, the twist, the, the reveal. I, I did not see that coming. I thought that this was just like a very smartly written book that also really takes into account its intended audience. It, re it really was written with them in mind. And I think that, I mean, anybody could get a lot out of reading this, but I think that that, that audience was very thought of in creating this. And I think that it was so smartly done in how it took a, what's usually a magical story and created a non-magical story out of it. That's very difficult to do, and I applaud Kay and Grum on being able to do it. Another one I really liked, Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Boulay. I have read this twice. It's one of my all-time favorite books. I know it doesn't look like a thriller, but it actually is. This cover sort of gives off the idea that this is a fantasy book, and it's not. It's a young adult contemporary, well, it's set in the 90s, I believe. As a biracial, unenrolled tribal member and the product of a scandal, Donna Fontaine has never quite fit in, both in her hometown and on the nearby Ojibwe reservation. When her family is struck by tragedy, Donna puts her dreams on hold to care for her fragile mother. The only bright spot is meeting Jamie, the charming new recruit on her brother's hockey team. After Donna witnesses a shocking murder that thrusts her into a criminal investigation, she agrees to go undercover, but the deceptions and deaths keep piling up and soon the, the threat strikes too close to home. How far will she go to protect her community if it means tearing apart the only world she's ever known? Again, I know it doesn't look like thriller, but it, it definitely is. If you're not sure, who, you know the what, um, but you're not sure who's involved like sort of like how ace of spades was you're not sure who's involved and why and how until the climax of the book so it's very like ace of spades in that in that one very specific way it's an important book discussing what it means to be biracial what it means to be indigenous what it means to take part in your indigenous community especially when you are an unenrolled member it also uh heavily leans into violence against women and discussing that um indigenous women and girls violence against them there i really should issue a trigger warning for race that does happen on page and please tread carefully when reading this. I never knew where this was going when I was reading it even though I know I knew what happened I I did not know how this was going to end. Oh man this is really just it's so it's so hard to talk about without wanting to cry. It's very emotionally hard-hitting it's very impactful it's doing so much more than your average thriller. The climax of this was so stressful even the second time that I read it. What I really appreciate about this is how much um, this discusses the elders of the indigenous community community, like the reverence that they have for them and how important they are to their community. Oh man, my heart. I just, oh, I just, oh, I want to cry thinking about it. So I highly recommend this, but um, I mean, trigger warning for murder on page, threats, um, rape on page, I mean, a, a death of a parent off page, uh, gun violence. I mean, so much. It's just, it's really painful. It's a really painful book, but I think it's so worth it and so incredibly well written. I am going to read, there is a not a sequel but in the same community another book the author wrote another book within the same community and it's called warrior girl on earth and i am reading that for a project this year so i'm very excited about that and that one is more like a heist thriller all right the next one is sort of a thriller horror mashups the woods are always watching by stephanie perkins and the line like the the, the like hook line is bears aren't the only predators in these woods which sort of gives away the entire thing Best friends Nina and Josie spend high school as outsiders, but at least they had each other. Now, with college and a 2,000 mile separation looming on the horizon, they have one last chance to be together, a three-day hike deep in the woods of the Peas 
Pisgah National Forest. Simmering tensions lead to a detour off the trail and straight into a walking nightmare and then into something far worse something that will test them in horrifying ways. I wouldn't say this is like, this isn't like psychological thriller. It's exactly what the synopsis impi implies. Actually, this is, like I said, this is like a horror thriller mashup. There's predators in the woods, not just bears. There's predators in the woods. This is also like an elemental thriller where you're worried about what's going to happen to them being out in these elements because this is about two girls hiking in a national forest and part of it is they get lost. So you're worried about them literally dying in the woods of exposure. But this was a three star for me. I liked the depiction of like testing of friendship, being out in the elements, wearing them down, and they do have to deal with, you know, predators. <laughs> this does have some really gross body horror in it, so like prepare yourself for that. Basically the whole thing is like they have to deal with bears and then they have to deal with predatory men, and that's like, that's the book. It's sort of like those, one of those one-off thriller movies, like, um, kind of like that movie with Blake Lively, where she, it's like her against a shark, or, and, and, but also it's not just like the shark, the bear, it's also like last house on the left where it's like there's predators in the woods it's like that so there is no on-page rape like there was in well there is technically sexual assault in this I don't know that I want to give you a lot of detail but it is it's still it's it's still sexual assault so just be just tread carefully because there's predators in the woods you know what I'm saying so I don't know that this is worth the read like even as a palate cleanser I don't know that the conversations we were having are all that important uh, I don't know that it's worth the time I spent reading it it's okay written but eh, it's very mediocre the next one I also didn't really like it's I'm not dying to you with you tonight by Kimberly Jones and Gilly Seagal, which I gave two stars. I like the middle of this kind of, but the beginning and the ending were not where they needed to be uh, as far as like how we how we set this up. I describe this again as like a situational thriller, like the last one where we're in a situation where danger, like a very particular uh, scenario. So, you know, the danger in the previous book was the woods. This is a riot. This follows two teen girls, one black, one white, who have to confront their own assumptions about racial inequality as they rely on each other to get through the violent race riot that has set their city on fire with civil unrest. Lena has her killer style, an awesome boyfriend, and a plan. She already knows she's going to make it big. Campbell, on the other hand, is just trying to keep her head down and get through the year at her new school. When both girls attend the Friday night football game, what neither expects is for everything to descend into sudden mass chaos chaos born from violence and hate. Chaos that unexpectedly throws them together. They aren't friends, they hardly understand the other's point of view, but none of that matters when the city is up in flames and they only have each other to rely on if they're going to survive the night. So the middle where they're like getting through this like dangerous situation together was good, but the inciting incident at the beginning for the riot was like an argument in line for the concession stand and I was like very confused because it felt extremely manufactured and not, it didn't feel like a real thing. Like it, I was like, wait, this is the incident? Oh, okay. That was really abrupt. And then all of a sudden the ending was also abrupt and it felt like we had randomly done things in the middle to sort of like tie the end together. But the biggest confusion for me was that I had a copy, a physical copy of this book. I had bought it when it came out and it came with a map so you could see where the high school was, where the girls lived, and then where the street was that the riot was mainly happening on because it started at the high school and then it moved over to this street. This like, you know, central street, right? It might have been called Central Avenue. I don't know. Isn't that what every middle of every city is called? Central Avenue? So it was just very confusing to me because I kept looking at this map while we're experiencing all this stuff and I'm like, why aren't we just redirecting and going home? And I don't know, maybe the authors might not have had any, they probably didn't have any say at all in the map, but I'm a map girly. So if there's a map in the book, I'm going to reference it because I'm very visual and I like to like try to visualize exactly what the author is putting forth forward. Well, that, I wish that that map had not been in that damn book because if the the thing about with suspense is that if it feels like it's manufactured, if it feels like um, it's an easy fix, then it does not feel suspenseful anymore. It feels like a waste of my time. And I just remember flipping back to the map, the map over and over and asking, why are we downtown again? Whatever the reasoning was, if there was one, it wasn't great because 
I kept thinking like why didn't we just go home and then eventually they do and I was like what was stopping us before why did we head towards the riot and the whole thing is they're trying to keep each other safe keep themselves safe I just didn't understand why we went the wrong direction the whole book <laughs> like it would have made sense if the riot was between them and their houses but that's not what the map says and then again the inciting incident for the riot seemed so ridiculous and I wasn't able to suspend my disbelief enough for this book I don't want a thriller that makes me think over and over well that just doesn't make sense I want ones that make me say oh it all makes sense now you know what I mean so that's it those are all my YA thrillers that I remember reading at least and my ratings and my thoughts on them I really welcome recommendations because again this is my palette cleanser genre I read quite a bit of it and stay tuned for a video where I talk about Tiffany D. Jackson's books because I'm going to do that separately okay all right thank you so much for watching leave your recommendations down below or tell me about one that you hated let me know if you've read any of these I would love to chit chat okay thank you so much for watching see you next time bye hello it is trash can Rachel it is the end of video credits so I'm here to say thank you for being a friend to my therapy bills patrons first and foremost and those are Alexander Brittany Bobitney Cammie Chris Dalton Smith DJ Roctopus Ellie Emperor's New Blues Aaron with two E's Eric Ethel Golightly JC Murphy Jack Jesse Jill John E Julie D Helene OK Casey McKenzie Kate W, Caitlin M, Quinn, Lady Kittybug, Lemon Jelly. Oh my god, that makes me hungry. Lex, Max Baker, Mixer Boneless, Night Owl Reader, Alice, Panoramic Demon, Rachel C, Rain, Reese, SJ, Scarlet, Samar, Shadow Auntie, Shiny, SMK, Steph B, Two Orbit, Chai Guy, and The Salem T. Lynn. Thank you all so much for being here and for being a friend. And last but not least, I have to say thank you for being a friend to my Potato Search Marks' patrons. And those are my favorite flavor is Rachel. Oh my God. Why? Alicia, Amanda, Andy, Angelica, Anita, Artie the Ninth, Ashley H, Ava, Ballads and Bookends, Beck, Blake Lemon Pants, Blythe, Bookish Bats, Bookish Brain Rot, Brie, Caitlin, Cardinal Ginger, Carlin, Casper, Kate W, Catherine, Kathy, Chris, CJ, Clementine, Cole, Colleen, Corwin, Cosmic, Danielle M, Darren, Deborah, Diet Goth, Dorian, Ebby, Ember, Emerald Dodge, Emily A, Emily L, Emma, Aaron, Ezra Moon, Fiona, Hannah C, Harpy Kiro, Haley G, Ilianaka, India Inks, JM Tennant, J is on Olympus, Jelly V, Jen Michelle, Gender Queer, Jenny G, Justice Sue, Jillian, Jojo Bookish, Kai, Kat, Catherine M, Katie, Kayala, Kendra, Kiara, Laughing Cat Dog, Laura G, Lauren G, Lazarus, Library Scars, Lindsay M, Lisa B, Lisa L, LP, Lou Siri, Lustful Octopus, Martin, MV Marlowe, Madison, Man Eating Plant, Marcella, Marquita, Malara, Mentally Unwell, <laughs> same, <laughs> May, MK Books, Molly, James, Nat, Natalie M, Never, Nicole G, Nicole R, Nyan Binary, Paige P, Penny Chilling, Fox Club, Rachel B, Reba, Rebecca, Rivi D, Rosie, Rowan, Sicoria, Sadie, Sayer Riley, Sakia Lume, Samantha M, Samantha O, Sarah H, Sarah the Bear, Sarah Z, Shamed, Shannon, Sheen Onion, Sean, T. Delegati, Tay, Talia, Three Old Dogs, Tiana, Tina, Toast, Trash Can Teddy, Ty, Taito Phoenix, Wiki Cherry, and Writer A. Thank you all so much for being here and for being a friend. <laughs>